Welcome to The Influencer Show with your host, Trishon Ben Salmi. Hello everyone and welcome to The Influencer Show where I interview people who can help influence the way you live life in a number of different ways. I'm your host, C7, and today we have a very, very special guest for us today. So if you'd like to introduce yourself to listeners and let them know a little bit about you. Perfect. So thank you first for having me on. I'm now Rothstein. I am a a teen coach and speaker. I founded something called Learn What Matters, which is all about helping high school students understand personal development and how they can kind of create their own personal development plan. I also work in people development at Google, and I host a weekly Instagram live series called Peace Over Panic, which is all about helping youth find peace over panic during the pandemic right now. That's a little bit about me, and I'm I'm based in California, but originally from New Jersey in the United States. That is great. Why don't you tell the listeners why you do what you do? Yeah, so I founded Learn What Matters about three years ago and just had this idea because I wanted to, I I asked myself the simple question of what makes me happy? And I started writing down all these things and I realized that I loved, you know, mentoring and coaching and working with youth, with youth in so many different ways. And I kind of asked myself, do young people ask themselves these questions of what makes me happy and all these other self-awareness exercises And so I realized that it's just so important to help young people figure out who they are at a very young age, because if you know who you are, you can understand what the best study habits, you can understand what college is the best potentially for you, or even if college is the right path, you can understand what career is so much of, um, I feel as though just self-awareness is so important for young people to know, and it can change the entire trajectory of someone's life at a young age. That's why I love working with with really young people because I find that the impact that I can have is so great at that age. That is absolutely amazing. It's so true because then at that age when you're able to then find yourself, you're then able to then just make the best out of any scenario you you may be in. Exactly. Could you like uh, share with the listeners what is what has been that uh, biggest influence on you that you wish you had known sooner? Yeah, so I have two things, and one of them is definitely being bullied at a young age. So at the end of middle school into my early years of high school, I had lost basically a lot of my friends, pretty much all of them. I had a rumor start about me and started getting bullied. I was never physically bullied, but a lot of emotional uh, bullying. And so that was a huge, huge influence on me. I mean, it's a huge reason I started watching Oprah, which influenced all of kind of me figuring out self-awareness and investing in my health a lot. So that was, that was probably a huge influence. And then I would say the second one is my first relationship. Um, I was in a relationship. It was the person, how the relationship was, how it ended, had such a big influence on me and really changed a lot of trajectories of my life just based on what happened through it, how I lived my life during that relationship. What I, um, everything I did was kind of like, what does this person, you know, want me to do? What does this person think? And I would just say that, you know, those are the two things that really stick out and biggest influences on me. That is absolutely amazing. I think like in today's like day and age, people often get caught into that habit of thinking like what do people think of me and things like that mm-hmm. and that's not only due to like uh, technology but also social media and just a range yes. of and uh, like a mixture of uh, many other things that we have nowadays that back in the like olden times people had they just didn't know were even possible so they didn't have to experience the things that uh, the generation is going through now mm-hmm. i totally agree and that's why it's so important i always say that you need to figure out who you are kind of outside of social media, outside of your friends, outside of relationships, outside of your family. You have to be able to describe yourself and figure out who you are by yourself really first before you kind of project that and ask other people because everyone's going to tell you who you are. But you have to be so confident in yourself and knowing who you are. Mm, definitely. It's about having that self-belief. I totally agree. Mm-hmm. What would you like, what would you say that, is like the ideal way for you to influence others to change the way they live their lives for the better. So this is something I'm very big with and a lot of people know about me is I love to have one-on-one conversations. And I love to have long conversations and deep conversations. 
And my reasoning for that is I find that when you really are able to influence someone in a healthy way, it's understanding who they are, who they were, how they grew up, and where do they want to be. And I believe that if you get to know someone on that deeper level, you can understand kind of, again, what influenced them, how are they motivated, what type of feedback do they need. And once you kind of understand that, then I feel that you can have the deepest type of influence. And I feel as though like the most systemic type that's going to actually last, you know, doing speeches, doing, um, having social media posts, those are great. But I think you really need to take it kind of that one step more, which is why I love teen coaching, which is why I love to jump on calls with people instead of just messaging online. I really like to take the time to know people. And so that's where I find that the greatest influence is that one-on-one connection. Definitely, definitely. I totally agree with that. Because then when you actually like have that call, or maybe even that video call, then you get to connect on a deeper level than through, because text doesn't really do it really. So then Mm -hmm. you only do like, um, you get to connect with the person, but then you might pick up on certain things that the person might say, do, or just like how they act, which should then help you then make the most out of when you're coaching the person. Yes, totally, totally agree. Hmm. Um, what would you like say people should do to stay motivated during most of crisis? So for me, it's the first thing is just finding some sort of purpose through it. It's so hard to find any kind of purpose. But for me, when you know the pandemic happened, I felt myself becoming a little bit lazy. I had a ton more time and then said to myself, you got to create a purpose to wake up every day. And, you know, I love learning what matters and I was building that, but I needed something else. And so creating this Instagram live series, Peace Over Panic, that's weekly that I felt as though was bringing joy and, and, you know, allowing people to have good content once a week that they can kind of rely on. I had to give myself that purpose so that I could look forward to something every single week. And so finding some sort of purpose through the crisis and, Sometimes that's just bringing joy and spreading love to other people in really simple ways. You don't have to create a whole show. You don't have to write a book. Sometimes it's just getting on the phone and calling people and telling them you love them. Sometimes it's writing handwritten notes. Sometimes it's um, sending videos to maybe, you know, now like frontline workers that you might know. It's just thinking of ways to either find purpose or bring and spread joy to others. Um, And then also I'd say just keep having fun. Like now I do a lot of, I'm terrible at dancing, but I love to just like dance, even if it's just like this, um, whether it's between meetings, whether it's, you know, doing my, during my Instagram live, just finding little ways to kind of make yourself happy and kind of silly. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's just about like maintaining like that high positive energy that then yes. you like motivate on a day to day basis, really. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Um, What would, like, let's say that you had a megaphone and you could say one thing to the world that will have a lasting influence. What would it be and why? Yeah, this is such a great question because there's so many things I would love to tell the world. And I think that something I would say is let love lead you. Um, I just, for right now, what's on my heart is just let love lead you. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. I really do appreciate that. Of course. What is your passion? So, oh man, I have so many passions and I'm kind of very big in telling people, you know, the world like to say, what do you, what is your one passion? And you have to, you know, develop your purpose around it. And for me, it's like, you're going to have so many different passions and so many different things that bring you joy in life and whatever you choose to develop your career around, sometimes it doesn't need to be what you're passionate about. And so for me though, I'm really passionate about connecting with people and really trying to figure out how can I, through a conversation, a program, um, an action of mine, help them become better or have some kind of aha moment. And that's why, like I said, I love to coach teens because I feel like it really gives me that opportunity to truly help you know, young person kind of become their best self. And so that's really super what I'm passionate about is just helping young people or really anyone become better and me being part of that journey for them. 
Um, and so, I mean, I also just say on the side, I love basketball, anything that deals with basketball, but I'm not going to be becoming a basketball player anytime soon. My, that time is over. But I'm also very passionate about basketball too. And I love watching and, and shooting around. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. And I think those like two, uh, like, um, <laughs> two like passions that you have are like really important because not only is it important to, not only is it important to like help the next generation, teach them uh, things and like life skills that they can then use to find what they're passionate about. But then seeing that, for example, maybe a couple of them might say, oh yeah, it's great that you're teaching this, but what is your passion? Then you're then able to show them that this is what I like to do and things like mm-hmm. that. And having that, um, having that like experience and then showing people that this is what I do for fun and you too can do this if you, if this works for you, it simply then gives them that even more self-confidence like this actually works. Yeah. And just being, and being an example and being a positive role model, you know, there's so many people out there that are celebrities or YouTubers and they don't want to be a role model. You know, they're just like, putting content out there. And I tell a lot of young people, you know, sometimes YouTubers and celebrities just want your attention or your money because yeah. they want to become, you know, fit more famous or they want to make more money. They, they don't really care about the being the positive role model. And for me, it's the exact opposite. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to be this perfect image, but I do want young people to see me as an example of I've been through so much in my life. I've always gone up. I've always tried to still bring that joy. I've never let the world really truly harden me. And so I think, like you said, it's about showing young people, here's what I'm passionate about. Here's why, here's where I've been. And here's, you know, maybe how I can help you figure out what you're passionate about based on what you've been and where you want to go. Definitely, definitely. I totally agree with that. What advice would you, like, let's say that someone has a brand new business idea or they're just like starting something new and they think that it's going to be the next million pound idea. What advice would you give to them at a time like now? I would say do your research. Really, you know, look at what the market is and do as much research as you can. Speak to, you know, who you think your ideal client is and ask them, you know, would you use this? Would you, do you think this would be useful? What do you want based on this? And really understand the market and your customers. Really take the time. This is such a good opportunity because a lot of people are not as busy as they once were. Yeah. So they're more likely to answer you online too. And so I say really do the research and network with people, whether that's you know your ideal customer, whether that's investors, whether that's just getting on a podcast and kind of putting your ideas out there. I would say just get that feedback by networking with people. Um, and, and I think that's really the most important things that people should work on now. Don't think so much about launching. Don't think so much about the end product, but really kind of work on what is it that I'm actually offering the world and making sure it's something that's really useful. And it is that kind of 1 million pound idea. Mm, totally, totally. It, I totally agree with that. It's about then, like, just piecing together exactly what it is that you want to do, and then that way you're then able to reach out to the people who can then help you to achieve your vision, really. Because mm-hmm. one thing that we all have a lot of is time, and especially now, like, there's no one who doesn't have it. So it's about then learning how to utilize it more effectively. Mm-hmm. That that's exactly right. Let's say that um, let's say that you was able to then let's say that there was like a room full of teens and they were all suffering from like similar uh, things and they weren't they were struggling to find what they're good at. What advice would you give to them? I would say you have to really first start with figuring out, like I said, who you are. So I usually tell a lot of teens to do this exercise, which I think today is actually, you know, a lot easier to do because they're home a lot more, is sit in your room with the lights off at night, put away your phone, don't have, if you can just be by yourself um, in your room, if you, if you are able to have a room that's by yourself or go somewhere else that's, that's quiet and literally say out loud, who are you? So like, you know, for me, I'll be like, I'm Mallory, I'm a strong woman, I'm from New Jersey, I like to have deep conversations, like just start kind of speaking out loud without the influence of anyone else who you are. 
And that's a starting point because you have a data set really and you're kind of documenting. So I tell a lot of people document, write down who you are and really start thinking about what am I good at? What am I terrible at? You know, who's my inner circle? Start just asking yourself all these types of questions of figuring out again, who you are so that you can, you know, start when you start looking up careers or you start speaking to other people, you could start kind of connecting the dots to see what careers would be best for you. What are you passionate about? What do you think would be worth spending your entire life on? Um, and so I think that just asking yourself certain questions is really the first piece. I think the second piece is starting to experiment. And I think a lot of young people, I know when I was in high school, I had a very hard time experimenting. I was so worried about what people were going to think about me. And I tell young people, you know, now is the time for you to potentially fail and that be okay. And I failed many times in my life where I tried to be, you know, I ran for National Honor Society's vice president in high school and I totally lost. And, you know, I was very upset for a little bit. But then years later, I ended up winning the um, executive vice presidency of my entire college. So that experience really helped me. And I figured out, again, what I was good at during that time, what I was not good at. So I think this just experimental phase. Let's say those are the two things is really kind of documenting and figure out who you are and then experimenting to see. Because maybe you are good at something that you didn't think that you were. And the only way to do that is to actually try. Mm. Totally, I definitely agree with that. And that is like a very inspirational story of how then like coming getting more clear as to who you are, what you stand for, and just like who you are as a whole and your identity, it then helps you then get a clear vision as to like what path you want to go down. Exactly, exactly. Could you like um could you share what was that like so called pivotal point along your journey and what did it teach you? So I have so, so, so many pivotal moments, but I'm going to kind of talk about something that's, I guess, um, not as, I've talked about a lot of pivotal moments in different interviews and different writings, but I'm going to talk about something that happened a little bit more recent. So last year, and I'm not going to go into super details, but I'll give you kind of a glimpse. So last year I gave a speech at Alphabet, um, Alphabet's mental health conference. And two months later, I ended up getting sued. And during that speech, I talked a lot about personal and work crisis kind of that I had went went through and how I got through them. And the person who sued me kind of disagreed with my version of the truth. And it was really unexpected. It was very confusing. I had never dealt with the legal system before. And it was very hard for me to read a piece of paper that was basically calling me a liar and all these other types of things. And it, I tell everyone now, it was the worst thing that happened in the moment because I was about to launch all this stuff for Learn What Matters. I was about to go on vacation. I had saved up the most money I'd ever had in my bank account and everything was basically gone or canceled in literally one day. And it ended up though being the best thing that happened to me. And it was a time in my life where I had to actually really kind of practice what I preach. So when, you know, the legal system is questioning who you are and you have these documents and all these people kind of writing against you where you know the truth, you know who you are. It was that moment of me saying, okay, I've told all these teens, like you have to be really uh, strong in your self-worth and you have to really figure out who you are. And it was me to practice what I preached. And it really kind of, it really affected me. I mean, I went through a really dark kind of period of time and got out of it because I was so... I had to remember again this whole piece of who am I, what do I really stand for, why am I even starting Learn What Matters if I can't get through this, and it made my purpose in Learn What Matters in myself so much greater. I mean, I have never become, I mean, I won my case first, I just want to say that, and I have never become more resilient or stronger through anything else in my entire life, and I found out who my real friends were. I found out um, just how to deal with this if this ever happened again, because people love to talk about, you know, live your truth, share your stories, but no one ever tells you what happens if someone sues you, Mm -hmm. you know, if you write a memoir, if you give a speech and you talk about, you know, being bullied or you talk about a toxic relationship, what happens if those people are like, that didn't happen, even though it might have. 
And so it really allowed me, because I love being open. I'm very open in my life. And I needed that to happen when I was not fully launched. And I needed it to happen so that I could learn from that. So moving forward, I know it will never happen again. Or if it does, I know how to deal with that. And so being sued for me was, like I said, a huge pivotal point. It has transformed um, all the content for learn what matters to be more useful it has transformed me as a leader and as a person and it um and i also because of this i booked a trip to south africa for so i did a solo trip to south africa which i would have probably never done but kind of splurged on myself so that was also kind of fun that i did that um and was inspired by it but that was a really pivotal point that i haven't spoken a lot about but totally totally changed me that is absolutely amazing. I really like how you were then able to look back on that experience as simply a lesson because like, yes, it might have seemed bad at the time, but then it was simply teaching you and preparing you for something that if you didn't um, actually accept that lesson and learn from it, it would have come back in the future to then um, re um, what's called it would have come back in the future to then repeat itself and then hopefully would have picked it up the, on then but it's absolutely amazing how then you're then able to look back on that and see it as a way to simply strengthen you as a person and then help you be more like transparent so that that way you can then imp have a larger impact on the people who you work with yeah exactly and so now I feel as though my story is even stronger when I help young people because, you know, young people, you know, I tell them too, you want to be open and authentic and you want to share things that have happened to you and you're going to go through obstacles. And when I now can share them, you know, I was on, I was in a legal case with someone accusing me of something terrible and I made it out. I won my case and I became better because of it. And I share those stories. I remember actually um, speaking at a library and telling the students what I was going through at the same exact time. Um, that all of this was happening and then being like, oh my gosh, you know, if Mallory could get through this, I can get through something in my mm -hmm. life. And yeah. so now I use it as really a lesson and hopefully a blessing to other people. And um, yeah, and just hopefully inspiring people that they can be, that, like I said, they can get through whatever they're going through. That is absolutely amazing. And thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Could you like share what are the top like, um, what would you say are the top three lessons that you've learned along your journey as a whole and how did they influence where you look at life? So the first one I always say is your health should always come first. And I think, you know, I learned this way too late. I used to pull all nighters like crazy in high school and college. I used to stay up all night studying or would procrastinate and then have to stay up all night because I had to get the assignment done. And I didn't really take into account sleep and just exercise and other things at a really young age, or I let it go at different parts of my life. And now, you know, my body is not, it doesn't bounce back the way that it used to when I was much younger. And so I always say my health, your health always should come first. Super influential for me, super important, your mental and physical health. The second thing I would say is that self-awareness is the number one leadership quality that everyone should aspire for because you know when you're self-aware you can figure out your authenticity what does being authentic mean once you are self-aware you can figure out how do you adapt because you know how you're going to react to certain situations also it's just being self-aware and understanding when you go through obstacles how you're going to become resilient and all, all those things are the stem of it i believe you know is is really rooted in self-awareness and I've seen that through a lot of the work that I've done with supporting leaders as an executive assistant and seeing that the most self-aware leaders are usually the best leaders to work with. Um, so first thing is health. Second thing is self-awareness. And the third thing is authenticity matters much more than others approval of you. And, you know, people sometimes love me. And then there's a lot of people who don't love me or don't love my style. I tend to have a more direct, blunt, type of personality and being very open and vulnerable. And some people don't like that. They think that, you know, whatever. But I always say to people at the end of the day, you can call me a lot of things, but you can't call me fake. And you can't say that you don't know the real me and where I stand. 
And I truly believe that authenticity is way more important than faking it and just hoping that other people like you and doing these fake posts or wearing things that you think other people are going to like. I just find that truly your authenticity, you will live a much freer life if you are just who you are and who you are is, you know, beautiful. And, um, so, so the first thing, like I said, is, is your health. Second thing, self-awareness. Third thing is that authenticity. Totally. And I believe that like those three, um, those three key points, which you shared there are definitely like the, like the pillars of life as a whole, really, because then being authentic simply allows you to have that self-belief, that resilience, that confidence mm -hmm. to just know like this is who I am. And whether you say, um, whether you say something good or bad is completely your opinion and it doesn't have to be true for me and also like how you touch on health that is a huge huge one that people often overlook because because like all like um how you work with teens you may uh, find this often happens because like many of them they're like oh we're young it's fine mm -hmm. the hours but then it's about the effect that it will have in the long run so that is a huge huge uh, part that people often don't seem to have um so don't seem to realize how much of a large effect it can have on us in the long term really yes exactly and you get older and you realize man if only i walked more if only i exercised more if only i ate healthier my body might not be hurting or i might not go through certain things and that was something again that i had learned because i deal with certain things with my health that if i totally did things when i was younger it would have probably prevented it mm -hmm. Definitely. And thank you so much for sharing. I really did enjoy that. And I really do urge that you listeners are taking notes so that you guys do not miss out on any golden nuggets that Mallory has been sharing with us tonight. tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, Mallory, what would you like say, let's say that you had to be another person for one day, who would it be and why? So, oh man, let me think. I think I'd want to be Oprah. I always say that I want to be like the next generation's Oprah because she just influenced me so much. But I think the reason actually why I'd really like to be her is not for all the glam, but to see how much pressure she actually is under. Because mm -hmm. I've worked with really successful leaders. I've supported a CEO. So I've kind of traveled and lived that lifestyle. And I know the pressure that comes with it. But Oprah is to me like who I kind of aspire to be. Or, or have her light and her energy in the world. And so I would love to though be in her shoes and see what kind of my definition of success really is. And mm -hmm. I think it actually, I think I actually want that to kind of deter me from that pressure I put on myself to kind of like become her one day. And I would just love to see, you know, who she keeps around her, what are her daily habits and the environment that she kind of lives in, that she kind of keeps this like, you know, Zen mode and positive energy and light for the world and the habits that she has so I could potentially help myself kind of create a, a, the same type of environment um, and kind of figure out what, um, like I said, what works for her and then, and then all that pressure just so that um, I understand what kind of comes with fame and what kind of comes with all the things that she's done in her life. So Oprah, Oprah would definitely be mine. I mean, she's on my, she's on my number one list of who I want to meet too. Um, just to say thank you for the influence that she's had on me. Oh, that is great. And I totally, totally understand what you selected there. And also one thing I wanted to touch on was how not only did you like focus on like habits, morning routines and things like that, but you also um, spoke about how you want to see like the people who she surrounds herself with because that actually plays yes. a huge, huge part in not only results, but also like just people's like attitude and mentality towards life as a whole. Yeah, it's so important to figure out who are the best people that you can surround yourself with. And you're going to lose people when you figure that out sometimes. And it's really hard to come to terms with some people are just not meant to be in your life forever. And that's probably one of my weaknesses. Like, I don't like to lose people. I don't like to let go of people because I'm always just like, everyone's great. And I live kind of in a fairy tale land sometimes. But I've really learned, especially in the last couple of years, how important it is to keep people around you who just make you better and who see the best in you. Um, you don't have to convince people to love you. You shouldn't have to convince people that you can make your dreams come true. 
and to surround yourself with only those people who make you feel worthy and loved um, is super important. So, so definitely that, that is finding out who your great network is in your inner circle is very key to life. Totally. I definitely agree with that. And could you share with us your views on the word legacy and what legacy you'd like to leave? Legacy is a big word. It's a daunting word. Um, I feel as though when people say legacy, it's like I'm dying tomorrow. Um, I really believe that you set your legacy every single day. And what I mean by that is you meet people a lot of times, whether it's just walking outside, whether it's in the grocery store, and you might never meet them again. And what is your legacy going to be if, you know, you become famous, let's say one day and they see you on the TV, are they going to say, man, I remembered when Mallory smiled at me. I remember when that girl smiled or that girl just had great energy. Are they going to say, you know, she was always in a bad mood or I don't know. I just feel as though that you set your legacy every single day. And so when I look at legacy for myself, I, I've said this in another interview actually in college, and I kind of looked back at it to see if my answer would change. And it's really the same. It's, I want people to know I genuinely cared about people that when I ask people how they're doing, I actually ask because I want to know the real answer. I don't want people to just say good. I don't want people to feel like they, they can't tell me their, their real answers and what's really going on. So I really want people to care, to know that I cared about them. And then the second part of that is I want people to feel as though that I was on their journey, that I had some kind of influence on their journey to become their best self. That whether it's a conversation, whether it's just my energy, whether it's something I kind of, um, you know, gave them a lesson, whether it's just my social media, something inspired them or was positive on their journey that helped them to become their best self. Those are kind of the two, the two big things that I really hope that, you know, whenever I leave this earth, hopefully not soon, that people remember me uh, by those. That is awesome. And I really did like how you spoke about, it's not just about like, because like when people often think about legacy or maybe even when they hear the word, they're thinking, oh, it's something that the famous has to worry about. But it's mm-hmm. actually about starting from now because like you said, every day determines your legacy because like, it's about having that lasting positive imprint on that person so like one day they may watch you they may see in the newspaper and they feel a certain way they might not remember your name but they're just like oh this person made me feel great and i might remember this what they said and it's absolutely amazing and i totally agree with that yeah and like it's not about one accomplishment or one action it's not about being famous you don't have to be famous to have a legacy there's so many teachers, there's so many people in my life who have last, um, who've had a lasting legacy, have left a lasting legacy or influence on me. And it had nothing to do with, you know, they accomplished something. It really had to do with how they treated me as a human being and the wisdom that they shared. And so everyone can have a legacy. It doesn't need to be, you know, Oprah that is going to leave this legacy just because she's rich and famous. Definitely, definitely. And could you like share some advice to your younger self? Oh man, Um, I think it would be a lot of the lessons that I kind of shared before. So I would hope to invest in myself more and my health more rather, and really take that time to figure out kind of my physical and mental health game plan Um, and really not care about what other people are drinking or eating or how they're exercising, but really figure out what's best for me and be able to um, keep that consistently. So I tell myself a lot about that. The other thing I would say is be very careful with who you let into your life, especially romantically. And because like I said, I was in this relationship and it totally kind of, there was good things about it. There was bad things. And it really changed a lot of the trajectory of my life based on that. And so really being careful romantically, friendship-wise, who you um, allow to know the, the most deepest parts of you and, um, and who you want to kind of build a life around and with. And then I'd say the third thing is just be proud of being authentic and not care so much about what other people think about you. And that you, as long as you are trying to be positive and being a good person, it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter you know, what house you live in. It doesn't matter what car you drive. It really just matters about you 
truly being yourself and living in that freedom of being able to live in your, be able to be yourself. Um, Cause there's a lot of people that don't. And then I see different paths that they go on and then they end up usually burning out or being very resentful because they aren't themselves. Um, so definitely, definitely those three things are, I would tell myself at a, at a young age. That is so, so very true. And especially like the one thing that I really did pick up on was how you spoke about consistency. Cause like consistency is key just in every life, right? like, regardless of what field you're in, just having those consistent steps in the right direction, it then maintains steady growth. And it also, yes. it also helps to build like good habits which then mm-hmm. help you just in life, despite what you may be trying to achieve. Yeah, discipline and consistency is super important through all of these things. If you do them one time, it's it's not as important as consistency through over time and being very disciplined. Even with just what you know, having good people in your life, it's like being consistent with asking yourself really important questions every single time you kind of meet someone is this person good hearted is this person who i want to be with for the rest of my life potentially and just making sure you're really disciplined and that taking care of your health is so much about consistency and discipline and also just being authentic you can't be authentic for one moment yeah. you have to be authentic your you know your entire life um so totally agree with that consistency is super important mm, definitely definitely <clears throat> and could you share some advice for those who they may be starting a brand new business or just like exploring a different area of expertise which they've never tried out before um could you share some advice for those who may have done so and they're already starting to give up yeah i would say remember your why first why did you learn something why did you start a new venture um is it something that you really are passionate about and love doing or are you just doing it to make money you know, I asked one of my friends, um, she's selling a lot of, she's selling certain products. And I asked her kind of like, what is your why? Cause she was finding that she was hitting kind of a low point. And she said to me, she's like, well, I just want to make money. And I was like, oh no, that's not a strong enough why. Um, because people are probably sensing that and they're sensing that you're not totally tied into the mission and purpose. And so I told them like, let's brainstorm different ideas because maybe you actually really do care about this stuff. and it might be also partly because of the money, but money is never going to keep you in something long term. Because, you know, if you get money, then are you just going to quit? Like, you know, you just kind of get rid of your customers and just kind of say, whatever, I got your money and leave. Usually when you want to create something or be involved with something, it's something that you want to do for a long time. And so I'd say, remember your why. Figure out why you started. And sometimes that might mean that you do end up quitting because you don't have a strong enough why and you kind of realize I experimented with this, I'm not really into it, and that's totally okay. But if you are really passionate about it and really love this idea, remember that why. Um, The second thing I'll say is keep connecting with people who believe in your vision and who want to see you succeed and are just doing kind of the same stuff. For me, there's so many people that had told me at different parts of my life, you want to be a social entrepreneur? What? You want to be a team coach? What? Like people did not understand the vision and really questioned me, but I would constantly, I'm like the queen of networking online. That's the biggest thing for me and just end at free events and different places that I go to. And I keep on trying to connect and network with people who are super positive and believe in me and just see the best in me. So I'd say surround yourself, again, this whole idea of who is your inner circle with just great people who want to bring that positivity back into you, kind of light that match within you to get inspired again. And then also just ask for help when you need it. I think a lot of times that when we are struggling, we don't want people to know. We want to just be able to figure everything out on ourselves. But it's really important that you ask people for help because maybe they were struggling at some point and they just never share that publicly or share that with you. So you would never know, but they have some great wisdom that they can share with you on how they got through it. I mean, there's so many times in my own life where I thought I was going to give up on learning what matters or I was going to give up on different things that I was um, doing. And I'm sure that if someone were to look look at my life now they might never know because i don't post about everything all the time so it's really important to ask people for help and ask people for wisdom when you need it definitely and it's definitely it's just about like being able to say like hey 
uh, this is what I need help with, can you help? And until you ask that question, you never know really. So it's about mm-hmm. then like utilizing your network, reaching out to them and just like asking them like, how can I be of service to you and vice versa really. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Hmm. And I really did like the point on how like you spoke about how, yeah, um, it's good to be authentic, but there may be times where you're not sharing everything which could actually not only uh, make you feel like you're holding yourself back, but mm-hmm. could also um, like it, people then sense it um, because then not only do you come across like, it feels like there's a bit of like a facade, like a mask that you're wearing, but then after like you then drop down that wall, people could then sense the authenticity. They feel how vulnerable you are. Mm-hmm. And then not only are you then able to connect on a, deeper level but then you're also able to then have that deeper connection with the people who you are impacting Mm -hmm. exactly exactly yeah and lastly could you share where people can find you if they'd like to find out about any upcoming things you may have yes so on instagram and twitter i'm at or and also tiktok because i'm starting to join that trend um (laughs) it's at i learn with mal And then um, my website is learnwhatmatters.org. It's going to be relaunching in probably a month. So it might look a little bit different in a month. And then I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook as Mallory Rothstein. Um, And that's pretty much where you can find me. And I'm very kind of, I feel as though that the best place is usually Instagram because I'm a lot more responsive there. But really, any of those places are, are great to connect with me. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for coming on the Influence Show today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. I love everything that you're building at such a young age. I mean, you're such an example to other young people who might want to kind of start a podcast or want to start something new and might be scared. You are kind of showing that, you know, just go for it and just get better along the way. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And also, thank you to you listeners for tuning in today. And like I, like I always say, if you guys have missed out on anything, feel free to rewind it so that you guys do not miss out any gold nuggets that we have shared with you today. And I'd like to um, thank you for listening. And if you too would like to have the chance to be featured on the Influencer Show, be sure to email the email that's going to be popping up on the screen. And I hope you guys have a great day. That's it for me. Bye. <laughs> thank you.